In the future society, a group of super capable workers have emerged. They can cut steel pipes and weld pipes with their fingers, and transport building materials with their minds. With their help, a super city, Lincoln City, has risen from the ground. In Lincoln City, 4% of the citizens have superpowers from birth, and they often engage in the city's construction industry when they grow up. However, with the popularization of machines, these superpowered people have been forced to lose their jobs one after another, social conflicts are intensifying, and they have gradually fallen from the highly respected super elites to the laborers who have no culture and can only carry bricks on construction sites. At the same time, a new type of illegal item extracted from the cervical fluid of the superpower people also appears on the market. In order to maintain social stability, the government has built a batch of mechanical police. Only super capable people who have obtained qualification certificates can work legally, and the remaining people will be arrested or shot if they are found to be working in secret. In this way, more and more superpowers who have no way out can only commit crimes. Connor is a superpower temporary worker who works secretly, and his mother who is suffering from a terminal illness at home is waiting for him to save money for her treatment. Facing the vicious exploitation of the black-hearted boss, he can only swallow his breath. On this day, as usual, he uses his superpowers to rub the wire with his hands. Suddenly, a drone came by. The police who received the report ordered the workers to line up one by one and check whether there were superpower people working without a certificate. The drone identified a wanted criminal, and the police hurriedly handcuffed him into the police car. He suddenly urged the flames and ran away after burning the police officer. The drone immediately released two mechanical police and killed him on the spot. On the other side, the police chief led the drug control team into a residential building, led by the mechanical police. The police chief quickly arrested a level 4 superpower. The companions quickly handcuffed the desperate drug dealer when they saw this. They discovered a horrifying scene through a secret door. The drug dealer was extracting the neck fluid of the superpower to make light illegal items. It is disguised as eye drops, and a light drop will make people forget all their troubles. The next day, Connor was waiting for a casual job on the street as usual. A red van stopped. Garrett was a younger brother of Marcus, the local drug lord and he wanted to recruit a body that could generate electricity. No one wants anything to do with these outlaws. But Connor, desperate for money, can't resist taking the plunge for $200. In the middle of the night, they came to a chemical plant. Connor's task was to generate electricity and short-circuit the high-voltage grid. Connor solved the power grid with one move. Garrett then realized he'd picked up a treasure, then Maddie unleashes her superpowers as well, melting the tethered chains with ease. Freddy moved barrel after barrel of chemical reagents onto the car. Carrying out these tasks was as easy as turning their hands for the superpower crime gang composed of superpower people. Just then, the security guards suddenly stopped them. Garrett snatched the walkie-talkie from him, while Freddy broke the steel pipe and locked the old man in the trash can. Making a quick getaway, a drone received the alarm and searched their whereabouts in the sky. For this, Garrett had already prepared a plan. He drives the car under the bridge and tears off the red film on the car, creating a false impression of escape. Soon, they arrived at Marcus's den, where their opposite number casts a mind-reading spell on Connor to get a feel for the family. Then he discussed with Garrett, due to the break in the cash flow, he urgently needs a chunk of money to fill the gap. Knowing that Connor has good superpower potential, he invites Garrett to train Connor to prepare for the next robbery. Returning, Garrett gave Connor an extra $100, using a bit of sweetener to hook the poor kid. As expected, Connor gets into Garrett's car again, this time on a mission to rob a bank. Hearing that he could share $25,000 US dollars in dirty money, Connor no longer hesitated. Although this job was life-threatening, he could only brace himself and take the risk for his seriously ill mother. And before the action, to ensure foolproof, Connor also needed to train to stimulate his potential. With a little effort from Connor, the bulbs in his hand lit up. And the next second, a powerful current instantly burned out the bulb. After several days of devilish training, Connor could easily control the energy of the current. Hold it, Connor. In the evening, looking at his mother's increasingly serious illness, Connor lied that he was hired by a large company and had a stable income source, so his mother did not need to worry about medical expenses. What he didn't know was that by this time the police had already named him as a suspect and were monitoring him. After several swings on the other side, the superpower crime gang stormed into the bank as planned, easily controlling all the guards. 
Connor walked to the front of the vault and released a super high intensity current, and the bank's security system was instantly destroyed. The door of the vault opened, and everyone was stunned. There were only $50,000 in it. It just so happened that today was the day for currency transfer, and the original $500,000 had already been taken away by the headquarters. But as soon as they stepped out of the back door of the bank, the four of them were intercepted by drones. At the critical moment, Connor launched a remote wave to destroy the drone and managed to escape smoothly. After returning to the bar, Garrett scolded Marcus for wasting his time. Marcus said he also didn't expect the bank to play out like this. Now those he owed money to were definitely coming to claim their debts. As soon as he finished speaking, a female assassin who had been eavesdropping fired several shots at him. Luckily his bodyguard blocked a few shots for him and he managed to escape with his life. Connor quickly catalyzed the power to knock out the assassin's pistol, and the other man pulled out a dagger and stabbed Connor, but fortunately the bodyguard, who had recovered his blood, was able to finish the assassin off with a shot to the head. Marcus was very angry about this assassination, and Garrett suggested that he retaliate. But Marcus was concerned about the power behind the foe and didn't dare to act. So the two parted on bad terms. On the other side, Nia, who was with Marcus, took the initiative to treat the injured Connor. Looking at the instantly healed wounds, Connor realizes that Nia, a seemingly weak woman, is a precious healing superhuman. When he got home, Connor's lie was exposed by his mother. His mother didn't want him to get deeper and deeper, but Connor just wouldn't listen. In the midst of the argument, the mother's condition suddenly worsened, and she fainted on the spot. The doctor told Connor that his mother's condition was very critical, and a hospital operation needed to be arranged as soon as possible. The surgery cost tens of thousands of dollars, which was like a mountain weighing down on Connor. Just as he was worried about the medical fees, the police also came to him hoping to get the location of the criminal gang from his mouth. Connor did not fall for it, firmly denying that he was a member of the criminal gang because there was no substantive evidence. The police could only release him without charge. After leaving the police station, Connor went to Marcus and offered to help him recover the illegal goods worth tens of millions that had previously been seized by the police. But after the task was completed, he wanted to use Nia's power next to him to cure his mother, Marcus. After using his mind-reading skills to confirm that Connor isn't lying, Marcus immediately agrees to the deal and sends his bodyguards and henchmen to support the mission. At the same time, Garrett proposed a 50 to 50 split request because he knew Marcus had no other choice. Soon they found their opportunity. In order to destroy the illegal goods, the police dispatched mechanical police to escort them and also sent drones to monitor in real time, ensuring that the escort mission was foolproof. But there was a fatal flaw in such a tight operation. There was a no-fly zone in the city center, which became the perfect spot for the criminal gang to act. First, they stopped the police car with a truck, and Connor took the opportunity to launch a grand attack on the mechanical police. With everyone's cooperation, they quickly subdued this transport team. After everything was ready, it was Maddie's turn to make her move. With a gentle touch of her palm, she quickly melted a large hole in the steel plate of the transport vehicle, an accomplice nearby tucked a tear gas egg into it. Before long, the tearful guards opened the car door and surrendered. The team's buttoned-up teamwork. Everything went smoothly as planned. Just as Maddie handed over the goods to the bodyguard, the bodyguard subordinates suddenly shot and killed the police. Maddie turns his head to check and is also shot straight up by a bodyguard firing a black shot as his men hold down Garrett and the others with their superior firepower. Marcus obviously wanted to bite back, using the criminal gang then discarding them. At this time, the drones were about to arrive dropping mechanical police to quickly kill a few of his men, and the surviving three took the opportunity to flee. But Freddy, due to excessive blood loss, still could not survive. The disruption of the plan to treat his mother and the departure of his companions made Connor extremely angry, vowing to make Marcus pay in blood. He took the initiative to find Police Chief Parker, told him of Marcus's location, and planned to join forces with the police to clean up the biggest drug dealer in Lincoln City. Soon, with the information they had, the police dispatched a large number of drones and mechanical police to launch a sweep to fight against crime. Relying on the strong firepower of the firefight, the police were unstoppable. Neatly cleaning up all of Marcus's subordinates, Marcus quickly pulled Nia and his bodyguard to retreat from the back door of the bar, and Connor and Garrett were already ambushed here and laid him down with a vertical shot. Taking advantage of the firefight with his superpowers, the mind reading loses its edge, leaving only the slash and burn bodyguards still toughing it out and charging Garrett to the death. The two men are in a stalemate, but Connor comes to the rescue, 
but the bodyguard is too strong and Connor is about to be choked to death. Garrett picks up a crowbar and sticks it in the bodyguard's eye, while he hasn't unleashed his superpowers at this point. Connor injects an electric shock into the bodyguards, giving the bodyguard's brain a lightning blast, which defeats him. Marcus, who was still breathing, tried to force Nia to heal him. But Nia turned around and grabbed his gun. Seeing that the situation was gone, Marcus no longer struggled. Connor begged Nia to treat his mother, but she ripped open her clothes to reveal a scar. It turns out her superpower is not healing, but damage transfer, all the injuries and diseases she has treated. In the end, all transfer to herself, with saving his mother on his mind. Connor didn't care about all this, he threatened Nia with a gun to activate the transfer, as a flash of strong light brightened, the Nia showed pain, which constantly condemned Connor's conscience, he remembered his mother's previous teachings, and in the end, he decided to give up treatment, Connor's mother was comforted by his decision, and she passed away peacefully in her sickbed, at the end of the story, after arranging for his mother's funeral, Connor decided to atone for his crimes and turned himself into the police station, while Nia regained her freedom and visited her father in prison. As for Garrett, he replaced Marcus as the new agent of the forces of evil, perhaps in the not-too-distant future, Lincoln City will usher in a new round of bloody storms.